Hello, hello everyone. It's Melissa Faust from stampwithmelissa.com. Welcome to today's video. We are going to make a fun fold card today called a double box card. Um, kind of a fun name. I don't know who names fun folds, but I think it works for this one. <laughs> you know, sometimes you like see one and you're like, is that really what that's called? <laughs> you can't tell what it is sometimes, but this one I think is good. Um, we are going to be playing today. I'm using the um, rocking horse bundle from Stampin' Up! It is in the mini catalog, um, the September through December 2023 mini catalog. So we are going to use this bundle. I'm also using the phrases for all uh, stamp set from the annual catalog um, because they've got this really cute confetti and cake for your happy day sentiment and I love that. So we are going to use these two sets to make a fun fold card together today. Um, just so you know, everything I show today is available in my online store. So if you see anything that you want to add to your wish list, um, you can check that out. Um, in the description of this video, I will have a link to my blog post. On my blog post, you will see the pictures of today's card. You'll see the pictures of, this is not the exact one we're making today, but this is the first one I made. So you'll have some picture, a picture of this one. Um, you'll have all of the measurements for this card. You'll also have all of the supplies. So if you are looking for something, it will all be linked there so you can find it easily, okay? Um, I am going to go ahead and set my camera up so you can see my desktop and let's get started. All right, so as I mentioned, we are using Rocking Horse Bundle and Phrases for All stamp set. So the Rocking Horse Bundle, you can see I've got some dies missing that we're going to use today. Um, but it is a photopolymer stamp set. It's got some really awesome dies, including some that don't stamp or don't die cut out the stamped image. Like you've got a little bow, you've got some blocks, the bottom of the rocking horse, etc. So you've got some really cool extra dies with this one. And then the phrases for all is so cute. It just has some simple, you know, birthday, congrats, thank you, with all my heart. I think that this kind of covers the bases on everything that you need. So if you are looking for that kind of a stamp set that just kind of all around has everything you need, this one might be it for you. Um, so this one I am using confetti and cake for your happy day because it's so stinking cute. Um, and I love it. So let me go ahead. I'm going to show you the card that I made, and then I'm going to kind of talk to you about why I made this card. Okay. So this is the first card that I made. Now we're going to make, you know, this is like the girl version. We're going to make the boy version today, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but this is what it looks like when it's all put together. You can see it kind of has that double box, kind of hard to see on camera, but this piece is lower. Um, but it's got that cute little thing. And you know, I know that the rocking horse set has a lot of Christmas sentiments in it. Um, and it is in the Christmas catalog. However, you don't need to use that rocking horse or any of these images. You don't need to use it for Christmas. You can use it for birthday. And I thought this would be super, super cute for a uh, little girl's first or maybe even second or third birthday. And I thought that would be cute. So that is the card we're making. And let me tell you why. Um, we're going to make this card today. So every single month with my team, we do a creative challenge um, and they can go ahead. We'll pick something. So sometimes we do a mystery card. Um, we do dice roll, which I'm going to show you in a second. Sometimes it's a technique. So like um, my team member, Alicia, showed us how to make um, the uh, what's it called? Double faux step fold card, I think. And she led us in that in a mystery challenge. And then Janet showed us how to do wiper cards. So if we have a technique being shown, sometimes that will be our creative challenge and whatever. But it basically runs for the whole entire month. And they just have to post a picture of their completed card in the comments. And then they go in for a drawing at the end of the month for a prize. So I still, I realized I still needed to make my October challenge. And we did a dice roll challenge in, um, October. So we got fun fold, check. Regals, nope, not in this one. <laughs> this one doesn't have any regals. Um, we got birthday, check. Embossing, check. I chose dry embossing. And punches, which I used the little ticket punch, which reminds me, I forgot to grab that. So let me do that quick. So this little, this punch here is what I used um, for my sentiment. So, um, that is what our dice told us we had to do. Now, I want this was the first time I made this fold inspired by Jackie Bullheist. So thank you, Jackie. Um, first time and I wanted to try it out and whatever. And I picked out this pattern and made the card and I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. I'm going to post a picture. And then I was like, Melissa, you didn't use any regals. <laughs> and if you're not sure what a regal is, regals are a color family from Stampin' Up. So Cherry Cobbler, Real Red, Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, Old Olive, Garden Green, Shaded Spruce, Pretty Peacock, Blueberry Bushel, and Gorgeous Grape. No, I don't have those memorized. The ink pads are all right there. <laughs> um, so I was like, all right, well, I need to remake this card anyway for YouTube, right? And um, this time we'll put regals into it and we'll make the 
boy version, okay? So I am going to walk you through how to make this card. And by the way, if you want any more information about my Incredible Crafters team, please just let me know. Um, I'm happy to provide you with um, more information. And if you are watching this on the day it's released, October 30th, um, there is a special going on through tomorrow, Halloween of 2023, uh, where you get a whole lot of extra stuff in your starter kit, which is super awesome. And there's no obligation. So let me know if you have questions on that. But all that aside, let's go ahead and I'm going to show you how to make this card. So um, as I mentioned earlier, I will have all of the measurements posted on my blog, but for the main two mechanism pieces, I do have the measurements ready today as well. So um, this piece is nine and three quarters by four and a quarter. We're going to score that in a little bit. We've got this piece here that is five and, whoops, this way, five and an eighth by three and a half. We're going to score that piece as well. And then I've just got some extra pieces. So I've got um, a blueberry bushel layer which will get layered with this embossed, that was one of our things, embossed basic white pieces. I've got some really pretty DSP here with the blueberry bushel, which is one of our regals. Um, I've got an extra piece of basic white so we can stamp and die cut our rocking horse. And I've got some crumb cake and some sweet sorbet for some for our teddy bear. So um, let's go ahead and we're gonna go, I'm just gonna grab these pieces real quick, move them off to the side. And let's score our pieces and I'll show you how to make this card. So let me start with this larger one. I've got my post-it here so I can reference that. Okay, light gray blade for scoring. And I'm going to do it this way first. So I'm going to go three eighths of an inch. Okay, and then I believe it's one and three eighths of an inch. Okay, then I'll flip it around. And now I'm going to do two and seven eighths and then three and seven eighths. Okay, so that is what it will look like when you've got it all scored. Let's go ahead and grab this piece then. Put my post-it there. And again, we're gonna go three and an eighth, or I'm sorry, three and an eighth? Nope, three eighths. <laughs> sorry about that. And then one and three eighths. Can you tell I'm a little tired this morning? Um, oh well, it's all good. <laughs> so that is what this piece will look like. So we've got the same two um, beginning measurements here or score lines. All right, we can move our trimmer out of the way. I'm going to move my post-its out of the way as well and grab in our piece here. Let me grab my bone folder and let's go ahead and score. So I'm going to go on this score line here. So the last one and we're going to score in. Just like that square column fold card we made um, a few weeks ago, you want it to fold in on itself. So I've got that ready. Okay, I'm going to grab my blueberry bushel DSP. I love the polka dot pattern. And I've got my seal here and we're just gonna add some seal to the back. There we go. And let me see which way, this way. And we're gonna just add this on the right hand side here like that okay now on this piece here you can see i flipped it to the outside so on this piece right here i'm going to just use my liquid glue because it's a little bit of a skinnier section and i'm going to add some liquid glue here maybe there we go don't add a lot because you don't want it to squish out onto your card okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to hinge this in hold on let me think about it so i'm going to fold this down here so okay one and then two so i'm going to fold down here and then this one here i'm going to fold all the way in does that make sense i'll show you that in a second and i'm going to press it down and that's going to glue our piece down oh except i used liquid glue you guys know i do not like liquid glue well i don't dislike it i just really like seal <laughs> um all right hold on did it stick that time? Yeah, it did. Maybe I didn't rub it in the right spot before. <laughs> All right, so you can see there. Now, if that went a little bit too fast, just go ahead and um, rewind the video a little bit uh, to see how I did that. But fold in on the second score line. And then I folded all the way down and made that little flap there, okay? Now, um, what I'm going to do is take that other little piece of DSP. Again, measurements will be in the blog post. And stick that onto our panel here. Now you can do this when it's closed, but if if you're just doing this fold for the first time, you might wanna get your box together before you start gluing things down to make sure you've got it all in the right spot, okay? Okay, then we've got this blueberry bushel piece. And again, I'm gonna fold in and then we'll fold in again. 
Okay, now this is gonna go here like this. So the important thing is that we can get this, whoops, fold down for me, there we go, that we can get this to fold flat because this will fit in our envelope for mailing, okay? So we've got it like this, right? I'm gonna take this, you can see it's folded in, grab my liquid glue again and add a little bit here on that 3 8 inch flap and then a little bit on the edge over here. Okay, and while this is folded, we can go ahead and I'm just looking at my DSP to center it on the DSP here and press that down. Okay, and then this time, look at that. It pops right open like this and can stand up. So super stinking cool, I love it. All right, let's go ahead and assemble our card. So I've got this blueberry bushel layer that I'm gonna lay there, totally optional piece. And then I've got this emboss layer because I needed embossing as one of my dice roll. Okay, so I'm gonna add some seal here to my blueberry bushel layer. I'm leaving a little bit of space on the edges because I need to um, have that little margin here for my embossed piece. I embossed this basic white piece with the basics 3D embossing folders or one of them, I should say. It comes in a three pack, so I always reference them as plurals, but it does come, you know, I just used one. <laughs> Added some seal to the back of that, and then we can go ahead and add this to our front flap here. So cute, I love it. This is gonna be such a fun, fun card. Okay, so now we've got our um, decorating to do, right? So this is where you can let your creativity run wild. I am going to use the rocking horse because it's so cute, of course. And of course, we're going to color it too. You don't have to color the rocking horse. You could stamp it in a, like, in, you know, ink color. Um, like you could use blueberry bushel here or a different color. Uh, but I'm going to stamp it. <laughs> or I'm going to color it, I mean, because, yeah, you know. You know. <laughs> if you've seen my videos before, you know I love to color. So, okay, we've got that all inked up and everything. So let's go ahead. I'm going to just let it dry for a second. Flip this over and I've got, this is from Phrases for All. I've got the sentiment about the confetti and my balmy blue ink pad. Confetti and cake for your happy day. And I'm just going to stamp this at the bottom here. Okay. Beautiful. And then I'll close up my balmy blue. Grab out my trimmer. And I'm just going to trim this. Maybe about a half inch would fit this whole sentiment. Beautiful. Okay. And then while I'm at it, we'll grab our punch here. And I'm going to take this. Now you can see that there's like three levels in here. So we've got a half inch, three quarter inch, and one inch that will fit. So if this were an inch, it would fit on the top. But because it's half an inch, I can just slide it right in. Slide it to the back. Punch that out. Flip it around slide it in, punch that out, and then we've got that cute little banner end there. Isn't that so fun? It's like a ticket stub. I love it. Um, so super cute. <laughs> and this punch has this bigger ticket stub as well. So it's a, a two for one, which is even better. All right, so let's go ahead and color this. So I've got my wild wheat, blueberry bushel, and balmy blue stampin' blends. I'll start with wild wheat here. And I like to start with my dark wild wheat. And I'm just going to color some of the rocker down here. You know, where some of that shading would go. Totally random in the middle there. Oh, I got outside the lines. That's okay. <laughs> um, and then we'll do some, you know, the mane here and the tail. Okay, so that was with the dark. Then we'll go ahead and grab our light wild wheat and color in the rest of the tail. Now I like to color in a circular motion because it helps me to blend that dark and the light together so you can really see the blending. Okay, and I actually, I think I'm gonna switch to my brush tip for down here because there's no like small little details that I have to try to avoid, so. Kind of. I find it a lot easier for whatever reason to color with the bullet tip end. I don't know why. 
I used to always, always, always use the brush tip, but now I feel like it's just too big. <laughs> All right, so then I am gonna take that dark um, wild weed again, and I'm just gonna do the little hooves down here. Okay, so I think I got all the wild wheat. Then I'll take my um, blueberry bushel. And because it's the darker color, I'm going to go ahead and... You know what? Maybe I'll do it reverse of what I did on the other card here. Um, so this one I used bubble bath as my main. And then you can see the bubble bath is very light in there. And I used berry burst as kind of a fun accent color. But because this is already blueberry bushel, I might do it kind of opposite here. So I'm going to go blueberry bushel in here. And then do the balmy blue, the light, everywhere else. So that we can kind of pull out another color. Okay, so that was with the dark. Grab our light balmy blue. And color up this. Beautiful. And then we will grab balmy blue, of course, and color in the saddle and the reins. And what are these? Are these called kickstands? I really don't know. <laughs> All right. Just going to go ahead. It's such a small area. I'm just going to color it instead of trying to blend it. Okay. Like that. And then I'll use the dark on the little, I don't know, the connector pieces you know. <laughs> Words are hard. All right, use light balmy blue here to color in the rest. Okay, and then we'll do these reins here. And I'm not going to color in the horse. You absolutely could, but I think it looks just fine, just like the ones at the mall. <laughs> okay. And beautiful. There we go. All right, so now we've got some die cutting to do. So I've got my little bowl of die cuts here and I'm gonna just grab my rocking horse and my washi, or not my washi tape, my post-it note tape rather. And I'm just gonna use this to help hold our die in place. Okay, so there's one piece and then here's another. Let me grab my big stamp and cut and emboss machine. I know it does not fit on camera very well, and I apologize for that, but it's just so big. <laughs> All right, so we've got our horse on here. Then I've got that um, crumb cake and the sweet sorbet that I talked about earlier. On crumb cake, I'm going to die cut out a cute little teddy bear. And on sweet sorbet, I'm going to die cut out, if I can pick it up, here we go, this piece. And for a while I was like, what is this? I don't know. And I think I determined it's supposed to be a bib, but... I originally saw it this way as a fireman's hat, and so that's what I'm going with with the sweet sorbet because I thought, oh my gosh, how cute. So we're going to go ahead and die cut those out. Okay, let me grab our pieces here. So here's our fireman's hat slash bib. <laughs> Doesn't it look like a cute little fireman's hat though? I think so. So anyway, all right grab our rockin' horse. Come here. There we go. Cute. And then we've got, of course, our little bear. And come here. They're so hard to pick up sometimes, don't you think? All right, we've got our bear there. Let me go ahead and move this on the floor. And we can go ahead and start to assemble. Aren't they so stinking cute? I love them. Okay, so we're going to grab our rocking horse first. And of course, we're going to use dimensionals. Let me grab regular size and stick these. We'll put one in the center here, one up here, one there. And then also let's put one over here. And then I'm going to use my minis. Can you guys tell, okay, if you have been around, I just have to bring this up. If you are a veteran, we'll say, to my channel, you know how I like to pull my dimensionals, right? Straight in a row. Okay, this is a um, product of my mom used these. <laughs> she went all over it. I was like, how do I fix it? So I've been trying. Anyway, <laughs> which is totally fine. I mean, dimensionals are dimensionals, whatever. Grab however you want. But I was like, what? When I saw it, I was like, this is not in a row. This is not a product of me. <laughs> so too funny. Anyway. All right. So we'll stick our rocking horse down. Now I want to make sure, you know, it's not a big deal if he sticks over this way because 
you know, he, he can stand up that way and he'd still be fine in the envelope, but you don't want to stick him too far this way because that won't fit in the envelope. Okay. It's okay when it stands up, but yeah, so I'm going to try to keep him as close onto the center of this piece as I can. Okay. Then we've got our cute little bear. So I am just going to, whoops, grab some seal here and add that to the back. And then I'm just going to stick this down onto our rocking horse. We're going to cover that little coloring boo-boo that I made earlier. Okay, and then let's see how we can attach our little hat. Now there's little holes in here and I was gonna try to leave them in, but one fell out. So we'll just poke the rest out. Got them, okay. And let's see, how do we wanna do this? We want it to be a, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so cute. Now look, I know it's supposed to be a bib, but it's just too cute. <laughs> I'm gonna use some liquid glue down here. Okay, that was kind of a bit, but that's okay. And then I'll just put a little bit up at the top, um, thinking that that will connect to our horse's tail, okay? And maybe it won't, but we'll find out. All right, so sticking that down. Now, when you die cut out the bear, it does um, die cut out cute little eyes there, so I just made sure not to cover those. All right, then we've got our cute sentiment here, and I will go ahead and add some dimensionals to the back peel off those backings and then we'll go ahead and stick this down right side up onto our card oh my gosh it's so stinking cute i love it so there is our completed card i did not add any embellishments i might add them um, if I do, you'll see them in the pictures on my blog, but um, I'm not really sure if I want to add any or not. Maybe. We'll see. Because <laughs> I just think it's so stinking cute. So let's see if I checked all the boxes. Okay. Funfold. Yep. Regals. Yep. Birthday. Yep. Embossing. Yep. And punches. Yep. And I did it. So I can officially post this in my team uh, Facebook group and be a participant in our October challenge. So Thank you so much for watching. Um, as a reminder, everything will be linked in that blog post so you can find all of the measurements, the um, pictures of the card. I'll put a picture of this one as well. Um, the supplies used, all of that jazz. So uh, make sure you check that out. If you like today's video, please give me a big thumbs up. That really helps me out on YouTube. And if you are not subscribed, please subscribe so you don't miss a future video, um, including my lives. So thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys next time. Bye for now.